live from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Right now, there are 20 amazing contestants with me on this stage. They're here from all around the world, and they share the same dream of becoming Miss Universe 2019. Ten of them are about to move one step closer to achieving that dream right before your very eyes. This is the moment. Let's meet our top ten. Starting with our first finalist, USA. I think one of the things that makes me most unique is my versatility. You know, I've been a civil litigation attorney. I'm also a fashion blogger. I'm an extra TV correspondent as well. I'm an impact ambassador for Dress for Success. That versatility is important to the job of Miss Universe. Hey, how are you guys? Beautiful. If I won the title of Miss Universe, my platform would expand incredibly. I would continue advocating for criminal justice reform. There are other countries that struggle just as much as the U.S. does. So I'd love to be the proponent of change for other people in other countries as Miss Universe. USA. Earning the next spot in our top ten tonight. Colombia. Before I was named Miss Colombia, I worked as a lawyer. What got me into law was the decision to work for my country. That as a lawyer, as Miss Colombia, as a human being, as a woman, I have a passion towards my country, towards seeing it flourish, towards seeing it prosper. Right now in Colombia, we're getting together to claim for our rights. People are taking the streets, people are striking, people are asking for better opportunities in life, for better education, for less corruption, for equality. So if I was to be Miss Universe, I would go back home and I would try to unite my people. Colombia. Also moving on to the next round. Puerto Rico. I actually come from a multicultural family. My mother is 100% born and raised Puerto Rican and my father's European. When I moved to New York, at 19 years old, I went there alone. I was in a big city. I didn't know anyone, but I was raised to love and respect diversity. And that is why I've created the movement of Seborico Sejona Sangre, to inspire other people who are just like me, who don't live in your mother country, to embrace our roots and our cultures, no matter where we end up in the world. I think it's so important that we understand that we do have a place on this earth. And our identity is the essence of our hearts. Puerto Rico, the fourth to move forward tonight, South Africa. My parents are very big on education. And so when I got financially excluded from school, that meant that I could not continue with my studies. A huge percentage of South African students were drowning in student loans and most of us were kicked out of school. So I felt like a huge part of me was being taken away. But when one door closes, you know, another door opens. After being out of school for a year, I was able to learn a lot of things about myself, but also through Miss South Africa and through modeling, I was able to go back to school again and graduate. South Africa. We're halfway through our top 10 after I announce Peru. Lo que más me apasiona es encontrar ese potencial que tengo en mí para poder ayudar a otros, porque no hay nada más bonito que ayudar y estar en servicio. Es muy importante ayudar a los niños porque la educación es la base del éxito. Y los niños no solo son el futuro, sino son el presente. Por eso yo siempre he creído de que si apoyamos a los niños, podremos construir una sociedad mejor, porque depende de ellos de que el mundo sea mejor. Y yo creo que cuando aportamos algo bueno para los demás, podemos hacer una gran diferencia. Peru. Also one step closer to the crown. Iceland.
My name is Birta Abipa Thorhulstotter and I grew up on a farm in Iceland. When I started to compete in Miss Universe Iceland, I didn't even think about the fact that I didn't look like any of the girls that won before me. It was pointed out to me, people did not want me to win or they would not vote for me because I didn't look Icelandic. So being able to stand up and open the discussion about how important it is that we do not all look the same was something that made this competition worthwhile to me and it's something that made me want to win. Iceland. The next contestant moving forward. France. Mes parents m'ont toujours bien conseillé, surtout ma mère. Elle m'a toujours dit de profiter de la, de la vie, de donner le meilleur de moi-même. Depuis très longtemps maintenant, je suis très engagée dans la lutte contre le cancer du sein. C'est une cause qui me touche énormément. Non, ma mère a eu un cancer du sein il y a maintenant quelques années. Et euh, ma maman va très bien aujourd'hui. J'ai pu participer à plein d'événements, plein d'activités avec des dames atteintes de la maladie euh, ou qui sont en rémission. On essaye de leur apporter un peu de joie dans leur traitement. France. The eighth contestant entering the next round. Indonesia. I am one of the youngest contestants here. I'm only 20. I was actually one of the youngest Miss Universe Indonesia's that has been ever crowned. That's something that probably sets me apart. I started my own foundation called Voice for the Voiceless. We raise awareness of the issue that 75 million Indonesian kids don't have birth certificates. A birth certificate can actually really help a child's life to get health care, education, protection, and future employment. It's an issue that doesn't just affect my country, but the whole world. Indonesia. Two spots left in the finals. One goes to Thailand. As a kid, I had a little nickname. Um, I was a little doctor because I loved helping other people. After I won Miss Universe Thailand, that's when I realized that, hey, there's actually a different path, a different way that I can help other people. I am able to help flood victims or to the We Are One, my art project. It gave me an opportunity to help people on a larger scale. Just seeing them happy, just seeing them like give me back a smile, that for me is my reward. Thailand. 11 women left, but only one spot remains. And it goes to... Mexico! I'm a writer and a speaker. I wrote two books about how to use science into empowering people around the world. I used to read books that my father introduced me to, different kinds of books about science, math, physics. I give speeches around the country trying to explain the importance of emotional and mental health. And I just gave my first TED talk in Tijuana. If I can use my life for really inspiring people, the importance of who they really are, my life would have absolute meaning. Mexico. Let's hear it for our top 10 finalists. These women are quite literally the best of the best, and they are ready to compete as hard as they can to win the title of Miss Universe 2019. All right, we are halfway through the competition. We went from 90 to 20 down to 10. Indonesia, congratulations! Oh my God, thank you so much. I'm super, super excited to be here because this is actually the highest placement my country has ever experienced, so. Congratulations, the highest placement your country's ever experienced and you're the youngest. You weren't even born when I was Miss Teen USA. I know you have a lot more competing to do. Go get your swimsuit on. Congrats, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, so much more left. Back to you, Steve. Uh, we've got the swimsuit and evening gown competitions coming up. Uh, but right now, I want to talk about some wardrobe that was even more elaborate. Uh, earlier this week, 
All the contestants competed in a national costume contest. Here's a look at the winner, Philippines. Uh, this is it right here. I thought I had on something fly, but girl, you just, woo! Cake and oranges and potato chips. This is a lot. Yes. It's not Philippines. It's Malaysia. Okay, well, let me explain something to you. I just read that in the teleprompter. Y'all gonna quit doing this to me. I can read. It said now. They trying to fix it now. See, this is what they did to me back in 2015. Played me short like that. This is Malaysia. I really love this national costume of Malaysia. It's crazy. Just so you know, this is the national costume of Cleveland that I'm wearing right now. I'm rocking this pretty hard. Congratulations. This is really nice. Thank you so much. Well, I would like to explain what this outfit is all about. So this is representing one of the states in Malaysia, which is the Malacca state, and it's a historical heritage in my country. So what you see here is five tables filled with food that we have during the high tea sessions. And what I've worn here is the bride's outfit of the mixed marriage between the Malays and the Chinese. And the wings here defines the tail of the goldfish, which they believe that is a sign of prosperity. So I am three in one, and Steve, we are kind of matching, actually. Yes, whatever you said, yes. I'm scared to say your name again, because I don't know what the hell this teleprompter got in it. Thank you, Malaysia. An outfit that nice, you ought to wear it again somewhere. That's really nice. Hey, okay, let's head uh, backstage and see if it's as crazy as I know it is. Thanks, Steve. I'm hanging out backstage in the Chi Lounge with Miss Poland. First of all, congratulations on being selected for Miss Congeniality. That is a really great accomplishment because all the girls vote for you, so you must be a really awesome person. But I have to ask you, as the favorite among the girls, who is your favorite to move on? Well, my favorite is Iceland. She was my roommate. She is still my roommate. I hope uh, for her to win, really. Yeah. She's so kind and goofy and funny. I love her. That's amazing. And I hope you know that Miss Congeniality is an amazing accomplishment. And even just getting it this far, you've done so much. And this pageant will open up so many opportunities for everyone. So maybe yeah. we should go cheers to that later. I'm ready yeah, for that. I'm so happy for this title, really. It's the best thing. I even asked my followers tonight to really uh, keep their fingers crossed for this. Amazing. Next <laughs> swimsuit competition. Don't want to miss that. 30 seconds, ladies, here we go. 